Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at finding the local minimum maximum values of a function. So we have find the intervals where f of x equals 4x to the third minus x to the fourth is increasing or decreasing and find the local extrema. So to answer this problem we're going to use the first derivative test. We're starting off with f of x equals 4x to the third minus x to the fourth and the first thing we want to do is find the derivative. So we'll have f prime of x equals, and using power rule, the derivative is 12x squared minus 4x to the third. So at this stage here, we're going to find the critical points. So we're going to factor the derivative and set it equal to 0. We'll have f prime of x equals, and if we find the greatest common factor, in this case, it's 4x squared. And left over in parentheses, we'll have 3 minus x. So we set this derivative here equal to 0 to find the critical points. And we have 4x squared times 3 minus x is equal to 0. Now this first factor here, 4x squared, is equal to 0 when x equals 0. And the second factor, 3 minus x, is equal to 0 when x is equal to 3. So these values here represent our critical points. So for the next stage of this problem, we're going to make a sign chart for the first derivative. So we have f prime. And for the critical points we found here, we're going to mark this on the number line. So we're going to make a mark at 0 and a mark at 3. And now notice here, this creates three intervals. And for this stage of the problem, with enough practice, if you're skilled with mental math, you could do this part in your head. However, when you're first starting out with this, I would recommend writing out the steps. That way your answer is more accurate and you get the full credit. So the first interval for this number line goes from negative infinity to zero. The second interval goes from zero to three. And the last interval goes from three to infinity. And what we wanna do is we're gonna pick a number in each of these intervals, plug them into the first derivative and record the sign. All we care about is the sign. We don't care about the value. So for this first interval here, the easiest number we could pick out is negative one. We're gonna plug negative one into the first derivative. And if we were doing this in our head, we would say four times negative one squared is positive, three minus negative one is positive, and a positive times a positive is positive. So that would be like the fast way of doing this, but if we write this out, we have 4 times negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, and then we have times 3 minus negative 1 gives us 4, and this equals positive 16. And we record the sign in that interval here. And now we repeat this, so we have to pick a number between 0 and 3. The easiest number we could plug in is 1, and we're plugging this into the first derivative. And just know, you could plug it into either one, but for most problems, if you plug it into the factored form, you're able to say uh, that concept out loud, like the positive times a positive is positive, a positive times a negative is negative. So the factored form, the factored form allows you to do this method in your head uh, when we're working at this part here. So if we plug in one, we could say four times one squared is positive, three minus one is positive, and a positive times a positive is positive. But if we write it out formally, this is 4 times 1 squared, and then 3 minus 1 is 2, and this is equal to positive 8. So we record our positive sign here. And now for the last interval, we could choose 4. We'll have f prime of 4 equals, and if we plug in, we'll have 4 times 4 squared is 4 to the third, which is 64, times 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and this works out to negative 64. Now just to point out here, the most common mistake with this problem is that students will plug in to the first interval, they record the positive, and they assume that it changes from one interval to the next. So they find one, and they say positive, negative, positive. But in this case here, notice at 0 there was no sign change, and that's going to be very significant when it comes to writing our answer out. And just know, what we have here 
is the most important part of this problem. Once you find the sign chart for f prime, like you're basically ready to go and answer it. So one thing we could look at here is the behavior of f of x. If f prime of x is positive, that means f of x is increasing. So from negative infinity to zero, f is increasing. From zero to three, our first derivative is positive, which means that f of x is still increasing. And then from three to infinity, our first derivative is negative, which tells us the behavior of f of x, that the function is decreasing. So notice here at three, we're creating a local maximum because the function is going up and then down here. But to write this out, we could say that f is increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to zero and from zero to three. Now it's important to note here that we do not include zero because the derivative evaluated at zero equals zero. So if your first derivative equals zero, that means at that location, the function is neither increasing nor decreasing. So for the next part here, where is the function decreasing? It's decreasing on this last interval from three to infinity because our first derivative is negative. And if our first derivative is negative, that tells us our function is decreasing. So for the last part of this problem, we're looking for the local extrema. Now, in order for the function to have a local minimum, we would need a sign change from negative to positive. And notice the first derivative does not change signs from negative to positive. So f does not have a local minimum. In order to have a local maximum, we need the first derivative to change signs from positive to negative, which happens at x equals three. So we can conclude that f of three is a local maximum because the first derivative changes signs from positive to negative. Now just know if we had to classify zero, we would say that f of zero is neither a local maximum nor a local minimum because there is no sign change for the first derivative. So before we conclude this video, we can look at a sketch of the original function f of x. If you have a graphing calculator, you could just type in the function here. And if we notice, this function will look something like this. At three, it reaches its local, well, at f of three, we have a local max. Okay, and at this value here, when x is equal to zero, it has potential to be a local extreme value, but notice it goes up, and instead of dropping here, it just continues to increase. So it increases from negative infinity to zero, and then it changes, we'll talk about it in a future video, concavity, and continues to increase until three, and then from three to infinity, the function starts to decrease. So all of the information that we found here is supported by the sketch of this function. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on finding the local minimum maximum values of a function. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.